guys. So looking here at the history of um, how we know um, the atom looks like it does. So a long, long time ago, uh, there was a Greek philosopher. His name was Democritus. And he used a thought experiment. What that means is, that means he didn't actually do the experiment. He just thought about it. And he thought, if I take a piece of gold and I cut it up, I get smaller bits of gold. And if I keep cutting it, I get smaller bits of gold. And if I keep cutting it and cutting it and cutting it, do I eventually get nothing? And he thought, that doesn't make sense because the gold's made of something. There must, I must reach a point where I keep cutting it and I can't cut it anymore. And those are the smallest particles that the gold's made out of. And he called them a thomas. It's Greek for um, uncuttable. So that's where we get the word atoms from. They are the smallest particle. We now know that obviously we can get those atoms and they get smaller and smaller bits, which are protons and electrons and neutrons. And the first person to find that was J.J. Thompson. He did some experiments um, and what he found was he had these things coming out of his atoms and they were very, very light. Uh, so he called them electrons. They were much smaller than any atom he knew about and all atoms had them. So what he realized is that atoms are made up of smaller things. And one of the things that it's made up of is an electron. So he put together a, a, a model of the atom. And the model was, he thought an atom was like a big um, ball. And overall it was positive charge. A ball was positive charge, but they had these negative electrons dotted through it. And they call it the plum pudding model, because it's like a big pudding and, and the electrons are the, are the negative um, plums. Now, we now know that that's not correct, um, but a lot of people poo-poo him, which, which shouldn't be the case. He, he did some very amazing things to work out the electron and that the electron was smaller than an atom. So he, he made a, a big step forward for us. Rutherford, um, Ernest Rutherford, the New Zealander, he was working in England at the time with some students, Marsden and Geiger. And he did an experiment, or a student did an experiment, where he fired some alpha particles. Now, this is a vacuum. And vacuum means there's no air, because we know alpha particles are stopped by a little few centimetres of air. Alpha particles are fired at the gold foil. And he wasn't sure what he was going to expect, but what he found was that most of the alpha particles went through undeflected. Some of the alpha particles were scattered over here, some, some decent angles, and even a few particles were scattered all the way almost backwards. This is his gold foil experiment. So from that he deduced what we now know of the atom. So what I want you guys to know is the difference between the evidence he saw and the model he put together of what the atom is. So he found two bits of evidence. Most particles went straight through and some of the alpha particles were scattered and some of those were even scattered almost backwards. So from evidence number one, he concluded that most of the atom is empty space. So you've got to look at the difference between his evidence and his claim. With the second evidence that some alpha particles are scattered backwards, what did he claim? He claimed that the atom itself has a small, small because most of the atoms went straight through, positive, positive because the alpha particles are deflected, and very dense. Very dense because occasionally an alpha particle is scattered all the way backwards. And it would only do that if it hit something very, very small and very um, concentrated with positive charge. And he called this the nucleus. And you put those two claims together that most of the atoms empty space and the atom has a small, positive, and very dense nucleus. And you get the solar system model that we know today with a nucleus down here and electrons orbiting it. So take this um, video as solid as you want to make sure you get some good notes. But especially for Rutherford's gold foil, I want you to be able to distinguish between what evidence he saw and what claim he made. Okay? Um, I can't stress that enough. People conflate these two. They think they're the same thing. What he saw was most alpha particles went through. What he then figured out was most atom, most of the atom is empty space. Great.